To me, purity culture equals rape culture. In the 90s, 90s and early 2000s, there was this thing called the purity movement. And they would um, give girls what are called, and it still happens today, purity rings. And often the way this would go down is that their dad would come with some flowers and she would get all dressed up and they'd go to a daddy-daughter dance. And then he would put a ring on her 11-year-old hand and she would promise to not have, she would promise her dad that she wouldn't have sex before another man put a different ring on her finger on her wedding day, before she even knew really what sex was, who she was, or what she wanted. the ring to college, kept sleeping around and feeling like it was this burning eye judging my every move. Your sexuality never belonged to your dad or your husband or your girlfriend. Like your sexuality has always belonged to you. I was raised in Colorado Springs uh, in a military family and we were part of a church community uh, which is called the Church of Christ and it was very, very conservative. Uh, so conservative it was, um, I mean I never, I never heard a woman pray out loud in front of other people until I was 27 years old because women were not allowed to be leaders. They couldn't even really be ushers at the church, much less be a preacher or pray out loud. It's filled full of people who don't look like they should be in church, which to me is perfect. <laughs> I felt like any church I showed up to, they, they might be friendly, but they didn't feel welcoming in the sense that I, feel this pressure to like watch my language and don't don't let people know I have a dark sense of humor or that I have the past that I have or that I have the opinions I have or whatever and it's exhausting to do that and so I wanted to start a church that I didn't have to culturally commute to show up to and neither did other people I didn't want it to have founder syndrome, which is the thing where the founder of an organization kind of stays too long and kind of messes it up because they can't let it go. So I think like grace is so powerful that I want people to be able to access the truth of themselves. And the irony about shame is it actually keeps us from the reality of the things we might need to address. Because shame is so powerful, we want it all to stay hidden. And how does it, how, do, how can it be healed if it's always hidden?